Do you guys ever have that feeling that no matter how much you stretch, you can't get a tightness in the front of your hip? How about if you have soreness in your lower back and in the front of your hip and groin? And it's just no matter what you do, it doesn't go away. I'm Dr. Tony Rockland. I'm a physical therapist of 24 years, and I specialize in the treatment of hip intraarticular pathologies such as labral tears, hip osteoarthritis, and femoral acetabular impingement syndromes. One of the most common complaints that we see is this tightness or soreness that no matter how much they stretch or massage, they can't get rid of it. They're putting lacrosse balls in there. They're trying foam rolling. Uh, they're doing like a massage gun. It just never goes away. Well, here's the deal. It's not tightness. So you're thinking, well, what are you talking about? I'm telling you, it is tightness. It's not tightness. So when you come to the clinic and we evaluate you, we'll do this test. And the test looks for whether, you know, the length, is it actually tight or not? And a lot of people will see that they're not tight. And then we'll do tests for weakness of your hip flexors and it'll test weak. And so one of the biggest mistakes a lot of physical therapists make and patients as well, is they think, okay, well, if I'm weak, you're supposed to do strengthening. They'll go and do four to six weeks of strengthening. The strength never comes back. And in fact, they're getting worse. And there's nothing more frustrating than that. So if that's you, this video is for you. What happens in the human body is when there's a joint dysfunction, such as a hip problem or a lower back or thoracic problem or an SI joint problem, um, or if something's moving too much, the muscles around those joints will get what we call hypertonic or guarded. Think of it like road rage. It just gets really mad. And when it gets really mad, it shows up as weakness and tightness to the person, to the, to the testing. And so what we wanna do is we don't wanna stretch that. We don't wanna strengthen that. We wanna do this release technique and then retest it. So when you come to the clinic, we'll do these hands-on techniques where we'll go in there and actively and passively release that and then we'll retest you and it's totally strong. Strength is all the way back in three minutes. Now, you're probably thinking, well, how's that possible? Because it wasn't weakness to begin with. It just presents like that. So what I'm going to do is talk to you today about iliacus and psoas. I wanna teach you how to do a self-release for both of them at home. This will make your whole day better. Check it out. Okay, so here we are with an anatomy poster. As you can see, here's the front of the stomach. Here's the belly button right here. Okay, now if we took all that away, and this is the view of, actually, we're looking through your stomach. This is your lower back, your lumbar spine. Your belly button would be right about here, around L2, okay? And then this bone right here, where it says 24, that's the front of your hip bone, you know? You have one on each side, obviously. So what we're looking at, here's your psoas, and here's your iliacus. They join together to form a hip flexor common insertion into your thigh bone or your femur down here. And so what we're going to do is we wanna work right here next to your belly button to get psoas, and we wanna work right here in front of that hip bone to get iliacus. And there's other tissues here that we do wanna get as well um, that will naturally uh, be affected by the treatment. But when you see this, then you realize, wait, I get it now. If this is a long strand of hair and the pulling and guarding is up in here, I shouldn't put the lacrosse ball down by my hip joint, right? Which is right underneath my finger. So we're going to treat you up here to make this feel better and to make your lower back feel better. Okay, the first thing you wanna do is make sure you're on a firm surface. Now, this is going to be uncomfortable and there are ways to make it more tolerable. It, it's completely normal to be uncomfortable, but if we go by that zero to 10, that's pain scale, right? Zero is no pain, 10 is the worst pain imaginable. You want this to be around a three or a four. If that's too much for you, start at a one or two, and I'll show you how to make those modifications. But to be effective, this definitely is going to be uncomfortable. Now, you don't need a seven, eight, nine, ten. If you are, that's, you're a glutton for punishment, and that's not necessary. It's also normal to feel a little bit, sometimes people get nauseous, and or they just feel like a, some discomfort referring up and down. Totally expected and normal as well. But we don't want you to suffer in the beginning, so start off easy and work through it. You might feel a little bruisey afterwards uh, for a couple of days like any other new technique. I kind of think of it as one of my other dumbest analogies that works really well for people to understand it is flossing your teeth for the first time. When you floss your teeth, your gums bleed, but we don't rush to the ER, we don't call our physician. In fact, we actually keep flossing in the area that is irritated and bleeding because if we're consistent, 
that tissue gets broken down and remodeled, and within 10 to 14 days, we have healthier tissues, right? So if you feel a little uncomfortable with some of this stuff, then obviously it could be like flossing your teeth for the first time. You know, just make sure that you keep it at a low level, and if you experience anything that's not expected, too much pain or anything like that, then obviously consult your physical therapist or your chiropractor. Um, you shouldn't be suffering with this. And then as time goes on, you can make it a little bit more intense. And after you can tolerate the full weight of your body on the ball, you're going to start seeing this, this release of tension and pain and tightness in the front of the hip. Let's check it out. You're gonna place the ball on a firm surface. And what I do is I go down to my elbows and my knees like I'm in a plank. I will rest my belly button right on top of the ball. And let's say I wanna do my left side. So I'm gonna to move to the right just a little bit, okay? You don't wanna move a lot. So you just move a little bit and then you start to come down slowly because you know it's going to feel uncomfortable. You're, it's like someone's got a fist in your stomach. You want to spread your legs way out. One of the biggest mistakes I see with, with therapists is they don't have the patient spread out enough. And then put your hands down and turn your head sideways like this. Okay, you don't want your head up like this. It's bad for your neck. And if your head's off the ground, then your muscles can't be relaxed. In this case, we want total passive release. You'll see people do techniques up in here. That's not wrong. But for stage one, we want to go all the way passive. Okay, start with one minute and work up to five minutes. Like I said, it might be a little uncomfortable. Now, if it is, I'll show you the modification. All right, so let's say that you try this and you're like, I just can't tolerate it. I'm a big baby and I just can't deal with how it feels. That's okay, that happens to a lot of people. You're not a big baby. It's when you haven't done something, it's really uncomfortable. So what you wanna do is you'll have your ball there Grab a couple of towels and you'll know what size to have because you, if your pain was like an eight or nine, then just keep on trying heights until you get to that three or four area, that tolerable area. So you'll put the towels on each side of the ball so those will lift your body weight off the ball a little bit so that uh, your full body weight can't be on the ball. So you'll come down again, find your belly button, just move over a little bit. And then when you go down, much easier. Okay, so that's how we're going to attack the psoas first. Now let's show you the iliacus. Okay, now we're going to show you how to do the iliacus. It's more of an active release technique uh, because you'll be moving. Now you'll need a lacrosse ball and it helps if you have a kettlebell. A dumbbell will work, but a kettlebell just seems easier. To generate the forces, you want to have a weight because when you're not going to be on your stomach and we want to put pressure down to that muscle group. And using your arm strength just tenses up your neck and it doesn't feel that great and you risk injuring your neck. And so if you have about a 10 to 15 pounds, if you're bigger, you can use 15 to 20, but you just have to be careful when you're getting into position, we don't want to lift this up and hurt your shoulder. So here's what I'm going to do. I come down to my back. Make sure you're comfortable. I have a little slider here so my leg will slide. Now, here's that hip bone. Here's my belly button. Here's the hip bone. I'm going to put this ball, lacrosse ball, right on the bone, and I'm going to just roll it towards my belly button, but I wanna make sure I stop right there, almost as if I'm pushing down back underneath the bone. You don't wanna roll this way. You don't wanna go down to where your pain is. You don't wanna go straight up. You wanna go diagonally right towards the belly button. And then you'll take your weight and you'll put that right on top. In this case, it's a 15 pounder. So I have one hand in here, one hand down here. Now, you wanna to be totally relaxed with your head down, okay? What I'm going to do is the weight does a lot of the work. I wanna press with my hands lightly without tensing up all these muscles up here in my neck. And I wanna create a, a discomfort, like a hard massage feeling of like a three or a four. As you get more comfortable, you can take it up a little bit. Again, in the beginning, it's going to be uncomfortable. So I'm gonna press in now, Instead of just holding that, I want to actually now move my leg in three planes of the human body. So I'm going to go this direction, just slides, make sure your foot stays on the ground. So I'll do about 10 to 15 this way, and I can adjust how much pressure I'm putting in as I'm going. After about 10 or 15 of those, I'll stop here, and then I'll go into a bent knee fallout. 
Okay, so now I'm getting the transverse plane. And again, some of these are easier than others, so I'll put more pressure in like this one. After about 10 to 15 of those, I'll go down and do little snow angels, abduction and adduction. And I take that in and out as I'm pushing that underneath the bone into that where that iliacus lies, okay? And I'll probably go through this a couple of times. The first time, you know, when you do something, like your first set of push-ups, your second set of push-ups always feels better than your first set, right? Because you're kind of dynamically warmed up and got your nervous system and tissues going. Same with this. I always find that the second time is more valuable than the first time, okay? So then I would go through all these directions again, just like that, okay? So if you have any of that pain and tightness, again, that we feel like, I just can't stretch out this tightness, it never goes away, it's probably not true tightness. And that groin pull that never goes away, it's probably not a groin pull. So definitely consult with your physical therapist if you have any issues at all in symptoms like that. And again, if you have lower back pain, it can be coming from the same area. Now it's important though that you discover why are the psoas and iliacus doing this? They don't just wake up to be, you know, wake up someday and just decide to be jerks. They're usually being told by something else. So you definitely want to make sure you're going after the source of it. But what can you do today to feel better? Here you go. Good luck, everybody.